Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Let's Code an Indie Game. This is the series where I introduce people to the tools and techniques they need in order to start indie game development. In episode 1 we looked at setting up Love2D very quickly and we drew something to the screen just to prove that it worked. In episode 2 we're going to look at how we take keyboard presses or button presses and use them to update our game, therefore making our game interactive and slightly more interesting. Let's quickly recap what we did in episode 1. Okay, so we had a main.lua file, and this file is the main file for communicating with the Love2D framework. We can see that we have we made three methods in here. We made a load method, we made an update method, and a draw method. So the load method is what gets run first, it sets up the state of our game. The update method updates our game logic and it is cooled as often as possible. And the draw method very similarly draws things to the screen and is cooled, well not exactly as often as possible. These methods are run at about 1 uh, 160th of a second, so 60 times every second if possible, giving us nice buttery smooth animation and logic. We also made a sprite class last time, and the job of the sprite class is to take an image and draw it to the screen for us, so we don't have to think too much about it. And we can see it in use down here, and if we run the game we can see it in use here. We have our adventurous sprite, and it uh, sort of slides across the screen here, then teleports back to the beginning again. Right, so building on that, we are going to look at making our sprite move based on the keyboard rather than having it move automatically. So let's uh, start by getting rid of the code which makes it move automatically, and we'll just do nothing for now. We're also going to change the name of the Adventurer to be Adventurer Sprite here. And this is just so that it doesn't get confusing later on. And we're also going to stop drawing the adventurer inside of draw for the moment because we're going to use a new class to do our drawing. So we need something which can hold the adventurer sprite but also hold the logic needed to move it around the screen. And we're going to call that thing an entity. And in general, whenever we have anything in our game that needs to make a decision or perform an action, that thing is going to be an entity or it's going to grow out of the entity code we write today. So let's go ahead and get started. We will create a new folder inside of source called logic. And inside of logic, let's create a new file and call it entity.lua. And very similar to episode one, the first thing we're going to do is create a new local variable called entity. And then at the bottom of the file, we are going to return that table, which we create. There we go. And we need a way of creating entities as well. So let's go ahead and make our entity.create function. So remembering that uh, this entity.lua file or module at the moment, this is a this is sort of like a class if you've done any Java or more object-oriented programming. But you know, it doesn't matter if you haven't. The thing, the important thing to remember is that this is the blueprint for all of our entities. It's not the entities themselves. The entities themselves come from this create method here. And what we do here is we create a new empty object and we name it instance. You can name it whatever you want, but instance is a pretty good name. Um, and then we return it. So we have a nice shiny new object here, um, as yet unsullied by the codes, but that can change very quickly. So Yep, we have every time we call entity.create, at the moment we just return a new empty object. So let's give that object some behavior. Um, first of all, what do we need to pass into our entity.create function? It would be good if we could uh, draw our entity so we can tell what it's doing. So we're going to pass in um, our sprite that we, uh, that we made in episode one. And we probably also want some x and y values. So let's go ahead and attach our sprite to our entity, and also let's set up the x and y values. Instance.x equals x, instance.y equals y. There we go. 
and uh, we already know we want to draw this guy so or girl you know I try and be uh, gender neutral when I do this so uh, this code let's just go with let's just go with code uh, we do not need to personify everything so uh, let's do local draw equals function and create a method uh, to draw our entities and we'll pass in self as the first argument because this is a method we want to run on the instances not on the uh, not on the module so local draw and in here we're just going to do self dot sprite and call the draw method that we wrote in episode one so now if we go into our main.lua file we can pull in our entity and that's in source.logic.entity and create one down here so let's uh, go for let's call this player just to make it uh, make it more obvious what it is so we'll just create a local variable so it isn't global because um, if it's global it means anyone can grab or anyone within the code base can grab hold of it but it's just good practice to keep it local and we'll do entity dot you know like your groceries keep it local um, entity dot create and when we create this entity we'll pass in our adventurous sprite and we also well, let's give it an x and a y value and inside of our draw function let's go ahead and do player draw and let's see what happens if we run the game at this point attempt to call method draw a nil value from line 17 so let's take a look um, on line 17 we're calling draw it's getting upset because draw is nil it doesn't have a value attached to it player draw comes from entity create so let's take a look inside of our entity class and we can see that I haven't attached the draw method to our instance down here so let's just do this and this means people can grab hold of draw from the instance run the game again here we have our game um, but we've we've gone backwards we're not moving at all but that's okay because we're going to use the keyboard to move instead um, let's have a look at what's happening here should be fairly obvious we draw the sprite from within the entity whenever we call entity.draw now what we should notice is we have two different x and y values our sprite now has an x and y value and our player has an x and y value and this could get very confusing because we don't want them to get we don't want them to get out of sync so what we're going to do is we are going to go into our sprite and we're going to take away the x and y values there we go and now in self.draw we're actually going to pass x and y in as arguments so x and y Make sure we have a comma there and that means if we run the game of the moment actually everything is fine because aha if uh, x and y are nil then the game just interprets them as zero but if we so we got rid of these values here but if we wanted to draw our adventurer at say let's go with 50 50 run we see that they're still in the same place because we need to actually use these x and y values inside of our entity class now so when we do self.draw we will also do self.x self.y and there we have it we're using the x and y from our entity class not from our sprite class now you might be wondering why i didn't just change the values of x and y on the sprite inside of the entity uh, and i'm using a an important programming principle here which is called tell don't ask and that basically means if you can tell a piece of code if you can tell an object to do something that's generally better than asking that object for information and then trying to change that information because what we're doing is we're keeping more of our drawing code inside of our sprite and our sprite is able to make better decisions about how things are drawn and we're keeping more of the other code inside of the entity this way otherwise we'd be pulling values out of our sprite using them inside of the entity and then shoving them back into our sprite which is just more code and it's messier and more likely to cause bugs so we're going to do things this way around splendid so 
we can draw our entity, but it doesn't really give us anything. It's just sort of a, you know, it's kind of like a sprite class of moment with no image. So let's go ahead and add, let's make it interesting. Let's add an update method and start to think about how we're going to deal with the keyboard. So inside of our update method, we are going to grab hold of a function from the Love2D framework called keyboard is down. And what this will do is it will give us true if the key is down and false if it isn't, nice and simple. So if we say if love.keyboard is down right, then self.x equals self.x. Uh, and let's, you know, let's make this a variable as well. So let's call this speed end. Um, what we would expect to happen is when we press the right key, our x value increases by our speed whenever the update function is run. So let's go ahead and add speed to our instance very quickly, our instance of the entity, dot speed equals speed. So that means in our main dot lua, we'll have to pass that guy in. Uh, five feels like a good value for now, for speed. And then in update, we need to remember to call our entity update method. See what happens. And it says attempt to call method update a nil value. So exactly the same as with our draw method, I need to actually come in and make this available on the instance. Update is still nil. Check I've saved everything. Inst.update equals update on our instance. Local update is a function. Then in main.lua we are calling, ah, that's because it's not called entity, it's called player, player update. Right, now if we press the right button, ah, our player actually moves, fantastic. So let's go ahead and add in the rest of the keys. Oh, rest of the keys, let's add in four more keys. Right, left, up and down. Um, so for our right values, we increase them. For our left values, we decrease them because zero is at this end of the screen. For our up value, we need to change self.x to self.y. And actually when we go up, we want our y value to get smaller uh, because zero is at the top for the y axis and um, positive y is at the bottom. And then for down, we just want y to get bigger. Let's give that a go. Cool. So we can move our entity around and it draws using our sprite class. Yeah, it's lovely. It works. Uh, one interesting thing to notice at the moment is if we press down and left at the same time, we start moving diagonally which we probably don't want right now. So let's uh, let's go ahead and fix that. We may decide we want this later, but right now, um, right now we don't. So we're just gonna make a local variable here called moving. We're going to say that it's false. And then for each of these values, we're going to add in a bit more logic here and say, if not moving, then self.x Uh, equals self.x plus speed, and then we'll say moving equals true. There's a couple of ways we could do this. This is sort of the simplest. It's not, it's probably not the nice, nicest because we're, we are repeating ourselves a lot, but it does, it does work. We may think of, in a future episode, we will probably tidy this up anyway. How this is going to work is we're going to introduce these concepts, then we're going to come back and improve and update them as we go. So this is not the last time we we will be touching our any of our classes really. And that's what it's like in the real world. You write some code, you try it out, you come back, you tweak it, you change it. You uh, you very seldom sort of write something once and then never come back to it, which is why keeping it neat is important. Um, what else do we need to do? And not moving.
So this will basically mean if the key is down and the moving value is false, we're allowed to move. But if it's true because we've already moved, then we will not be able to. So let's go ahead and try. There we go. We can now only press one movement key at a time. We don't get any cheaty diagonal motion. Very good, very good. Okay, so let's review what we've done so far. And we may wrap up the episode here. It's going to be a bit of a short one, but at the moment I'm focusing on doing smaller episodes where we tackle one specific thing. Uh, and I fi figure if you want to watch a couple of them, you can watch a couple of them. If you've only got a few minutes or, you know, half an hour, you can watch one of them. But uh, I'll probably end up doing some longer episodes once we get into some more complicated concepts. So let's review. We made an entity class uh, for dealing with keyboard logic. This entity class has our player sprite or has an adventure sprite inside of it, which it uses for drawing. And the, I guess the big difference we've uh, made here is one, we draw the entity, we don't draw the sprite. And two, we call player update every, uh, every time the game updates. And this lets us check the keyboard inside of our entity class uh, run this code here and actually move the character around. Uh, of course we made a create method for our entity because it is a class and we need to make instances of it and this just has a sprite, an x and a y value and a speed of moment and our entity currently has two methods, draw and update. And when we put it all together we have something that lets us move a sprite around the screen. So progress! We've gone from having something which was sort of statically animated at the beginning to something which is dynamic and can move around. Please come back for episode three, where we are uh, going to introduce some new concepts, do a bit more. We're going to build it up bit by bit, and eventually we will have something that looks a bit more like a game and uh, you know gets a bit more fun, a bit more interactive, has a few more things going on. Uh, yeah, we're going to introduce sound at some point, animation, some more pixel art, all of that good stuff. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and good evening. You can check me out on Twitch as well, I live code sometimes. Uh, last night I was live coding and preparing for this episode, and it was great just talking to some people on chat, getting some ideas, testing some things out, so do keep an eye out there as well. Thank you very much, and goodbye.